even if the bugs aren't hatching, the fish have seen seen plenty of bugs and they're looking up. And we always say that fish are looking up. So you can you can make a fish come up and eat with a good presentation. Um, so you don't have to have you don't have to have a hatch um, to to make the fish want to come up. It will in July because they've been seeing lots of bugs around. That was Justin Spence talking about dry flies at West Yellowstone. Justin and Big Sky Angler sets a wet fly swing record today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. If you're brand new to the show, you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash subscribe to easily get the next episode delivered right to your phone. Uh, it's a page that we have there that will easily allow you to click whatever app you're on and uh, let you subscribe. That's the best way to support the show and stay in touch with our newest uh, episodes coming up. Justin Spence from Big Sky Anglers is here to take us to a season fishing uh, the big rivers of West Yellowstone. We find out when the Madison, the Henry's Fork, and Hebgen Lake and uh, other famous waters should be targeted and some tips to take your trip to the next level. Before we get started, let's hear from our sponsors. OPST's rods represent decades of dedication to sustained anchor two-handed casting. These rods are a true illustration of Skagit Master Edward's vision. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash OPST to get started right now. That's wetflyswing.com slash OPST. In today's world of mass-produced products, Stonefly Nets has reclaimed the tradition of handcrafted care with their custom wood landing nets. Stonefly's goal is to create a unique custom classic wood net that are second to none in quality and can be customized for that little extra touch. Please head over to wetflyswing.com slash stonefly to get your custom net today. That's wetflyswing.com slash stonefly to get started right now. So without further ado, here is Justin Spence from BigSkyAnglers.com. How's it going, Justin? It's great, Dave. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for thanks for doing this again. I was looking back on our last episode. We did an episode 57 of the Wet Fly Swing podcast, uh, which was way back in January 2019. Do you, you remember that one? I do. Yeah, it's hard to believe. It's It's been, uh, it's been you know, what? Almost three years, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was pre, we did it last time, it was pre-COVID, right? COVID came in a little bit, I don't know, I guess, whenever that was, a year after that. But, uh, so, so yeah, we have some catching up to do. Um, so, yeah, I want to jump in. We're going we're to talk West Yellowstone. Last time we talked about South America and kind of Argentina and everything, and we're going to focus on more of your home water now, right? This is, this is kind of where you focus most of your time now during the year? It is. Yeah. I've, I've kind of made this uh, home. I'm, I'm still traveling to Argentina, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not spending six months every year down there. Like I, I did in, in the past. So, yeah. um, this, this for the last 20 years has, has really been, you know, yeah. Home. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And it's still the same crew out uh, big sky, right? You got you and, uh, who are the co-owners out there? So uh, Jonathan Heems is one of my partners, and Joe Moore is my my other business partner. So it's the three of us, and we, uh, yes, it uh, it's hard to believe we're we're going to be coming up on five years uh, being on the corner, um, hmm. you know, uh, where Bud Lilly's was in the past, and and you know, Big Skyler's Fly Shop. Uh, so, yeah, five years this summer. That's right. So, That's right. Has it been? Uh, uh, has it all been pretty easy? I wouldn't say easy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, anytime you. <laughs> you know, you merge, <laughs> you merge three businesses and, and, uh, and, and, you know, you, you take on what, what we've taken on. Um, there's a lot of learning and, and growing, but, uh, we've got great partners and we've got a great team. So, um, really happy with, 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 uh, things, you know, especially with everything going on, we've learned a lot. Yeah. We've got a great crew at Big Sanglers. That's cool. Yeah. I heard, uh, I heard Joe recently on another podcast, I think it might've been, the barbless podcast, one of the ones that's pod faded recently, but, um, he, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool hearing his story as well. It sounds like he's, you know, he had some cool, like van stories coming up with his family up to West Yellowstone. And so we probably, you know, maybe if we have time, we might dig in a little more of that, but I wanted to start us off, you know, digging into kind of a, I guess a season in West Yellowstone. And, 
I've been by there, I guess, a few times, but really haven't ever focused as much on the fly fishing. And um, yeah, would you want to start us off just talking? I mean, maybe right now we are in, uh, you know, we're, we're May, right? I mean, so when does the season kick off out there? Well, you know, it, it's a, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm going to throw this out since we're, we're sitting here in May and uh, you and I were, you know, we, we've kind of talked a little bit leading up to this, um, you know, it, a couple of days ago, it was bright and sunny, and this morning I woke up to three inches of snow. Wow! And uh, you know, I'm sitting. I, I drove into Yellowstone. There's a little spot in the park uh, where I can, you know, sit on the Madison River and maybe see a fish uh, rise. It's probably a little early for that, but um, I'm sitting in Yellowstone Park right now, and and sitting on the Madison. And you can't fish in Yellowstone um, just yet. Um, so you know, to kind of answer your question, Memorial Day is a um, a time when our town really wakes up to fishing. That's when Yellowstone Park opens okay. um, to anglers. A lot of the guiding we're doing right now, so we have um, we have a permit to guide. When we bought Bud Lily's Trout Shop, We uh, part of the purchase was a permit to guide on the Henry's Fork in Idaho. Jonathan has spent his last, you know, 20 years kind of guiding the Henry's Fork. And, and when we purchased Bud Lily's Trout Shop, you know, we... Uh, acquired a permit to guide on the Henry's Fork. And so, you know, when does the season really kick off? I, I'd say May May is, is when our season kicks off, um, you know, for guiding and fishing. Um, Yellowstone Park opens, you know, at the end of the month, uh, Memorial Day. Um, but the month of May is becoming more and more interesting. It always was, you know, a great fishery on the Henry's Fork. If you, you know, as you drive. So, so Dave, we, you know, we sit at almost... 6,600 feet, hmm. 6,700, wow. I think it's 666, 6,666 or something like that feet. So we're pretty high up, but, yep. um, if you drive 30 minutes, you, you can drop a couple thousand feet in elevation, right? Um, 30 to 45 minutes. So that, that's something that, um, you know, is, is why this town, uh, West Yellowstone is, is, you know, it's centrally located. And, um, it, it makes a lot of sense from a fishing standpoint, because really in about 30 to 45 minutes, you can be on, uh, a half dozen world-class fisheries. Oh, wow. Um, and, and what so, are, what are the other than uh, the Henry's fork? What, what are the other, uh, world-class fisheries? You, you know, so I'd say the Henry's fork, um, uh, Madison river, the Gallatin river, Yellowstone park, um, has rivers like, well, the Yellowstone is is a major one but then the lamar valley watershed uh, we have lamar slough creek um, down in the southern part of yellowstone park we have the headwaters of the snake and so you know all of these are within you know about 60 miles of west yellowstone yep that's right god that's amazing and and out of all those rivers is there one that really uh, gets you fired up or one that you've spent more time on than the others I think they all get me fired up at different yeah. times of the year. And, you know, that's, um, I, I, I they're all, the, the diversity is, is something that uh, really makes this, this area. And when you, when you talk trout fishing in the world, you know, if you look at, you know, Patagonia or even New Zealand, you know, the thing that makes this, this part of the world, um, so unique is the diversity, um, yeah. in waters and how you can fish for trout you know, thinking about those places again. So we're in May, but maybe it'd be good just to walk us through, you know, like right now it's May, where would we be going if we were heading out fishing today, like heading or heading up, you know, today or in the next week or so? Yeah. So, you know, last week our, you know, so we're in May and, and the things that we would be looking at, um, definitely the Henry's Fork, cause we mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. you know, dropping down to, you know, lower elevation, you get a little bit warmer water temps, um, warmer days. So, so we've been, we've been fishing down there a fair amount. We're also looking at the Madison outside of Yellowstone park. So, you know, West Yellowstone, um, the Madison basically flows just, just North of town into Hebgen Lake. But mm-hmm. once it gets out of Yellowstone park, um, it's fishable in, in the state of Montana. So we are, uh, picking places along the Madison to fish. Um, and, uh, and then ice out on Hebgen Lake, um, 
the ice is coming off the edges and there can be some really fun, you know, fishing right from shore. And so those are the, those are the things that we're kind of looking at right now. Um, with, with, uh, gotcha. you know, the current conditions. So, yeah. So basically May, so let's take us into, uh, now think of June. I mean, do things change as you get into June and things keep warming up? Yeah. So, so May is, you know, as, as you know, we look at the seasons of Yellowstone, you come to West Yellowstone, when, when, what's the season? And, and, and I really, we, we've always talked about May through October is, okay. is our season. That's, that's what we're working with. Um, with, with kind of a warming trend, I think May's becoming, um, a better month. Hmm. I mean, you know, i I, I hesitate to talk about April yeah. in, in our area because the weather is all over the place. There, there is some good fishing, um, on the Madison, Henry's Fork, um, Gallatin, but you know, May water temps are warming, bugs are starting to get a little more active. Um, and, uh, there's, there, there are a few more options and weather's usually more stable. Although, you know, I woke up to three inches of snow this morning. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, as we, as we go through May, we kind of, you know, um, the Henry's Fork will remain clear, uh, unlike the Madison, um, the Henry's Fork can, the levels can climb, but it will remain clear and fishable. Right. The Madison, um, in the next couple of weeks will, will likely start, uh, blowing out and, yep. and getting high and off color. And the Galton actually, I mentioned earlier. Um, just north of us is is kind of brown and chocolate, um, the majority of it, and and then the headwaters are in Yellowstone Park, and those aren't open until the end of the month. Oh, gotcha. And uh, and they're very cold. End of May, right? Memorial Day, so, so it all opens up in the park memorial. Correct. So so again, getting back, you know, we kind of we kind of pick pick our way through May. May's a fantastic month because not a lot of people are around. Um, fish have come off a long winter. There's some really big fish to be caught. And, and, uh, again, just, you don't have a lot of folks around. And if you, if you, you know, show up here and have proper clothing, it's just a really beautiful time to be in this area. Um, so it's one of our favorite, you know, early season months. Yeah. So, and then as you're going in, so, and then say into June, I mean, how did you think you, you mentioned those four or five or six places, you know, as you look yeah. at June, July, August, do you start focusing? Are you guys fishing everything all the time, or are you focusing on one or the you know the others? That's a good question. So we're we're kind of focusing on a couple of of different rivers, um, and 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 really, when when you say focus, as we move into June, um, I, I would say the Henry's Fork becomes a focus, um, okay. and and that uh, uh, well. Early June, we've got Yellowstone just open. So let, let's back up a little bit. The fire hole in Madison in Yellowstone Park are wonderful um, rivers to fish in those first two weeks of June. Um, they have thermal influences. So we're at the, you know, if you drive just into Yellowstone, the headwaters of the Madison, the fire hole and the Gibbon um, come together about 15 miles inside Yellowstone Park. And both the Gibbon and fire hole have thermals, which increase water temps. And so, you know, a lot of Yellowstone Park, the Galton, the Gardner, um, the Lamar Valley are, are really not options um, mm. early in June. But this stuff at the west entrance is fantastic. Gotcha. Water temps are good, water is clear, and we can have some, some wonderful hatches um, in those first couple weeks of June. So um, right out of West Yellowstone, if you haven't, you know, Dave, you haven't come over here and yeah. and seen the park in the early season, it's really a fun little, you know, thing to do that kind of mm -hmm. gets overlooked. Hmm. Um, and then the Henry's Fork, right? So the Henry's Fork is really coming to life. Um, by mid-June, you know, the ranch opens on the Henry's Fork. And, and then, you know, that lower river, um, you know, all the bugs. I mean, you have green drakes, brown drakes, gray drakes, flavs. Um, a variety of caddis, um, golden stone, sallies. You have all, all mm -hmm. these incredible hatches that, uh, drive the, drive the fishery hmm. and all that is happening. So, um, June is, is uh, a really special month. And I'd say those are our focuses. Um, as we move into kind of late June, um, the Madison's mid to late June, maybe third week of June, the Madison is, is usually outside of Yellowstone starting to kind of clear hmm. and uh, go from kind of brown to green and, 
and uh, it starts to wake up with with salmon flies that sometime around the third week of June start working their way up the river from Ennis and uh, will work their way up to, you know, close to Hebgen Lake. And um, so so June's a really, um, it's kind of when everything's waking up. The bugs are waking up, fish, water temps. Hmm. And these are all, are all these pretty much uh, natural flowing or are these kind of, uh, I mean, there's lakes. Uh, is Hepkin Lake, is that, that, that's a natural lake? These aren't like tailwaters or anything like that? Or Hepkin does have a small dam on it. Yeah. Um, so, so there is, um, the flows are regulated, but, uh, it, it's not, it's not like a tailwater you'd see in Colorado or New Mexico or, yeah. you know, um, where you, you really focus on that mile yep. below the dam. What does it look like when you get into the, or when, when is the busy, when, when is it kind of, you know, or does it, you guys look around and you're like, wow, there's, there's thousands and thousands of people here. This is nuts. Is that like kind of like a July? Yeah, kind of, I'd say mid June through mid September. And you know, that's something that we've, you know, people, people often bring up as they, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, there are a lot of people coming to visit Yellowstone park. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we, we deal with that, you know, that question quite often is how do, I don't want to go to West Yellowstone and deal with all the crowds. Yeah. And, um, I've always told people, well, you just, you can work around the crowds. I mean, we've, we've, as, as guides and anglers have learned to, you know, maybe get up a little bit earlier and avoid the crowds. I mean, I, I drove into Yellowstone, I'll drive in, in the middle of summer in the busiest months, I get up an hour earlier and I get into the park and Hmm. have a beautiful drive, see wildlife. And I don't wait at the gate and I might have to come out a little bit later than, you know, the five to seven window when everybody's coming out. Um, but yeah. you know, um, you can avoid crowds. So, um, I would say it, yes, there are a lot of tourists that come in, but, uh, if you there's still a lot of water to be fished that, uh, can be walked into, um, you know, Yellowstone, there's no floating, Outside of Yellowstone, you can float, oh, you know, okay. the Henry's Fork and the Madison. But um, if yeah. you're willing to walk or, or change the hours you fish, you can avoid crowds. Okay. So you can go in. So say say you're going up there with uh, on a trip, you know, with the family or whatever it is, and you want to go hit Yellowstone Park. You can, you know, June might be a good time, mid-June, get up there and you could, um, you know, essentially just get out there early and, and kind of, and maybe do some hiking or, I mean, what does that look like when you go into the park for fishing? Do you just kind of stop off the side of the road and, and just start fishing or what's that look like? You know, a lot of people do that. And, and that, uh, that the fishing's, you know, fishing's decent when you do that. But again, that's what the majority of the people do. And yeah. so if you're willing to get to a trailhead and, and do a little research on, you know, there's, uh, I only mentioned a handful of rivers, but all the tributaries and smaller stuff in Yellowstone that, uh, you know, fishes in July and August, if you're willing to, you know, um, put a backpack on, we often will, will hike in with our normal hiking shoes, have a backpack and our waiting, you know, waiting gear, a water filter, small lunch, and we'll hike in 30 minutes to an hour and we'll have a river to ourselves. Hmm. And, and that's still today with all the crowds because yeah. most people see Yellowstone from their car. That's it. So that's, that's the thing to do. If you want to get away, just do a little bit of hiking. And, and when you do some hiking in, in there, what, what type of fishing are, I mean, are we talking uh, mostly uh, rainbows in there? What, what's it like when you get off an hour up the trail? Well, it kind of varies. So, you know, on the Madison fire hole, you can't really hike anywhere and get away from people. So on the Madison fire hole, Gibbon, you're looking at mainly brown rainbow trout, white fish. You'll find the occasional grayling um, on the given that will kind of be in there, but it's, it's mo- mostly brown and rainbow trout. As you as you slide into some of the other systems, you'll start seeing um, West Slope cutthroat um, on 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 some of the you know um, western side of the park. Mm-hmm. You'll see Yellowstone cutthroat. Um, in the Yellowstone River, Lamar Valley, that that's that's one of the really special fish to target in Yellowstone is the Yellowstone cutthroat. Mm. It's a it's a it's a really beautiful fish to uh, watch come up and, and try to eat a dry fly. It's really slow and lazy and oh really and uh, yeah. Is it? It's a pretty like size wise compared to like the West Slope. Is it similar in size or how's that? How's that look? I think it grows maybe a little bit larger. Yeah. So, um, so in the 50, 15 inch fish is probably a decent size fish in that range. 
Yeah, and you can get them up to 20 inches uh-huh. on, on, on several watersheds. So, you know, um, you know, you know, getting back to kind of the June and, yeah. you know, we were talking about, yeah, well, well, you know, Yellowstone is part of this, this whole system. So we've talked, you know, Idaho, Henry's, Henry's Fork, Madison, Gallatin, and, and then Yellowstone Park waters. And, you know, as you move through June, we're, we're, you know, really starting to kind of, we're still on the Henry's Fork and focus, but now we're really focusing on the Madison outside of, you know, Yellowstone Park and it's, it's hatches. And, um, you know, those salmon flies are a big draw, hard to plan for, you know, I've seen them, uh, you know, third week of June. And I've also seen them on a big water year. I think it was 2011. We didn't see them till about mid July. Wow. So there's a couple week window there. And, um, but if, if you come and you don't find the salmon yourself in the salmon fly hatch, there's lots of other, um, bugs to fish, right? That's a great point. We just had a, um, uh, I just did an episode on the salmon fly hatch with uh, the Deschutes angler and, uh, and Amy did a really good job breaking down just that point. She was talking about how the fact that it's almost, it's almost uh, a little bit crazy. The salmon fly, you know, I think she said the majority of people that fish the river come there just for that. And then they don't fish it the rest of the year. So they're missing out on, you know what I mean? Like that surprised yeah. me, but I mean, they're missing out on some amazing hatches. And I know the Deschutes is, you know, has probably a lot of the similar hatches as you guys have, right? I think so. I, you know, I've never um, been able to get over and fish that salmon fly hatch yeah. on the Deschutes. But you mentioned, uh, I mean, the yellow sallies, the the golden stones, all the different stones, the caddis. caddis. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I've had, you know, there, I can't tell you how many, how many of the years, you know, if the salmon flies aren't really happening, um, I'm, I've got, I've, we have incredible caddis fishing, uh, or maybe that's a year where the fish really get on golden stones. So there's always something, um, again, it's just that everything's waking up mid June through July. Yeah. Um, we've, we've, uh, we've got, um, a lot of bugs hatching water temps are really good. They're still nice and cold. Um, you can fish all day. You know, one, one thing that, you know, I didn't really mention is the, the days in May and early June are typically shorter days because of water temps. And this is really important for the, the angler who's just showing up on his own and, and trying mm-hmm. to experience good fishing. And, and that has to do with, with, you know, the, the, the time of year, right? So early season, you know, everything's cold. Like this morning, if, if we had, you know, if I was taking someone out on the water, we don't need to be on the water at 8 a.m. We, we might want to get on the water at 11 a.m., let it let it kind of warm up let the fish warm up let the bugs warm up and and really be focused in that midday you know kind of time frame as you move into june though and you get into that middle june and everything is is warming and we have all these bugs around um we've got that perfect balance you know where where everything's you know right where it needs to be so mid june through july is is kind of everything is happening and uh, even into mid-August, right? Right. You've got bugs and water temps and um, long days. So, you know, you might be up in the morning and fish until, you know, nine at night All right. if you want. And now let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. In today's world of mass-produced products, Stonefly Nets has reclaimed the tradition of handcrafted care with their custom wood landing nets. This piece of art is accentuated by strips of hardwood that complement and accentuate the handcrafted handle. To be honest, I have never been a huge net guy, mainly because I didn't feel like my uh, old collapsible net was easiest to use and was not easy on the eye, if you know what I mean. The Stonefly uh, net not only looks beautiful, but has high quality netting that is easy on the fish and will last for years to come. For Ethan, the founder of Stonefly Nets, fly fishing has always had a traditional feel going back to fishing the three-weight bamboo rod with his great-grandmother. When Ethan designs a custom net, it's his hope that others will create amazing lasting memories for years to come. Please head over to wetflyswing.com stonefly to get your custom net now. That's wetflyswing.com stonefly, S-T-O-N-E-F-L-Y to get started right now. Okay, now let's get back to the show. How are you fishing the caddis? Well, what are you using? Like, what's your technique? What flies are you using for the caddis hatches? You know, there are a couple different there are a couple different um, patterns that we like. Um, 
you know, Joe's Joe, one of my partners, um, Joe, Joe Moore designed a little fly called the Comparabuzz. That's kind of a, uh, um, we use it as a caddis, um, um, but it also can be fished as, is a, you know, a, a mayfly merger. It just, you know, the Madison, um, is, is a river that we, we fish caddis on a lot and it's a real fast, you know, riffly kind of river down in the valley. And so you need flies that's, um, you know, ride a little bit higher than say over on the Henry's Fork where you have a lot of flat water and, and maybe more CDC or low profile caddis. So, you know, the Madison, if you show up on, on it or even the Gallatin, you know, a caddis that, a, a, just a standard elk air caddis is great, but, you know, Comparabuzz is one that Joe, Joe kind of, I think, designed on, on a lot of the Madison, you know, um, or on the Madison and, and we've used it other places. And, and uh, we also have, you know, another one, one of my favorites is a missing link. Yeah. Um, you ever fish that? Uh, yes. Yes. I, in fact, that's probably the one fly I've probably mentioned more than any other here because I had, I had an epic day one time fishing that. And I had Mike Mercer on who, who talked, you know, talked about that pattern that he developed. So yeah, it's a killer one. Yeah. Mike, Mike ties some, you know, he's one of those tires. I've, I, I think I met Mike 20 years ago. He wouldn't remember me, but I met him, you know, I have a buddy who guides out of the fly shop in Reading and we used to go sleep on Ernie's couch in <laughs> college and, and fish Northern California. And Mike was, you know, was, was, uh, you know, always coming up with, I think he had just come up with a golden stone, like a, um, poxy bag golden stone. And, and it was, uh, one of the hot flies on the Trini. Oh, cool. Who is Ernie? Ernie Dennison is, uh, one of the guys out of the fly shop and he's probably been there 30 years and he's a, he's a close buddy. And, uh, we used to, my close friend, Chad Smith, who now lives, uh, um, in Weaverville and the Trinity, we used to sleep on Ernie's couch and Ernie would draw us these, these great maps to, uh, you know, bounce around and fish, nice. you know, in California. But, um, Mike's Mike, um, that missing link, you know, getting back to Mike's patterns, I've, I've just really enjoyed, you know, fishing. He has a number of others that are, are, uh, are really fishy and yeah. the missing link. We, we fish it, you know, in our shop, I think we carry that in almost every color and every size. And we don't, we, we now, I mean, we fish it for caddis, but we fish it for a mayfly spinner. We fish it for a, an attractor, you know, have oh, you ever yeah. fished a black or peacock body? Uh, no, I haven't. So that's a great little ant or beetle. Oh, okay. And so again, it's uh man, it's it's just a good it's a good one. Yeah. Does that does that missing link is that pretty much work? I mean, it sounds like yeah, you use it throughout the whole season. Or you can. On 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 on, on almost all waters. Yeah. I'd say, you know, um that's one that that uh, most of us carry in our boxes is that missing link. Um it's a great one. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I was looking at the uh, the one you mentioned from Joe, which I, I see it. I found. I just searched on Google. I found it on uh, Kelly's on the slide in. It says uh, Joe Moore of West Yellowstone. It says the Comparabuzz. It says it's a hybrid of like the La Fontaine's Buzzball, which uh, obviously yeah. that's Gary Gary Lafontaine. But he was he was Gary. I guess Gary spent some time out in that area too. Yeah, I think I think Gary mainly fished around Missoula. Um, I, I'm sure he, he spent some time around West Yellowstone. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy named Paul Stimson who, uh, I think is kind of retired from working in fly fishing, but Paul, I was fortunate to, you know, work with Paul at Eric's fly shop back in early two thousands. And Paul was good friends with Eric Swanson and, and, uh, and Paul had worked with Gary LaFontaine in his, his last years, oh, yeah. um, in, in kind of getting, you know, some of Gary's patterns that had never you know, been introduced out and Paul's just a, a really neat man. He's a world-class fly tire. And, you know, so I getting to hang out with Paul, I, I learned quite a bit about Gary. You know, I think he spent a lot of his time in Missoula, but uh, Joe's Comparabuzz um, kind of has a mix of things going on. That's right. The Comparabuzz, it's a cool, yeah, it's like a, it's got a, uh, what is the body? Is that like a, uh, it's not chenille, it's some sort of it's hard even. He's got hackle and dubbing in the body. Oh, okay. And then has a little trailing shock and then kind of a, you know, compared on wing. But, you know, what we found on the Madison was most important is, you know, getting size right, but then something that floats. I mean, the water is so fast and choppy when you get down on in, in the valley. If you can't see your caddis, um, 
is it's kind of game over. And so, you know, you need to fish small at times, but that small fly has to float. Floats pretty well. It floats high, but it also, it also can be fished in flat water. And so one of the advantages of the way it's tied, it's kind of trimmed on the bottom is you can take that same bug and fish it on flat water and it, it's very effective. So it kind of gives you the, the best of both. That's cool. That's cool. It's interesting. I was thinking as you were talking, you know, Henry's Fork, Madison. I mean, there's obviously some big, I just mentioned Kelly, you know, Kelly Gallup. Uh, he's got his big shop. You got um, uh, Mike Lawson. Yeah, slide in, yeah. Yeah, slide in. You got Mike yeah. Lawson there. I mean, how many, and then you got you guys, are there a number of, of big, I mean, how many other shops are there that are kind of names that people would know of out there? You know, I think you got to mention Trout Hunter in yeah, there. Yeah, which is Hera. next to Mike, which is next to Lawson, the guys, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kelly's definitely a big name. And, you know, Blue Ribbon um, is another one that, uh, you know, you got to throw in the mix. Um, okay. Craig Matthews, you know, sold oh, yeah. to our buddy Cam, Cam Coffin. But Cam and, and Drew over at Blue Ribbon are great guys. Yep. And they, uh, they, they're they very, very knowledgeable. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of um, yeah. history there. Jurasek, you know, John Jurasek is a big name who's still tied to Blue Ribbon. I think he's kind of, you know, um, retired from having to be in there full time, but John's a wealth of knowledge and, and part of the West Yellowstone, you yeah. know, kind of fishing it, scene. And, and, um, it's pretty amazing. It, it's uh, you're like, you know, I always think of, you know, we hear, you know, obviously Colorado is a hot spot, but I mean, you guys are, and I mean, recently I had a J- uh, Jack Dennis on, on the podcast. And oh, neat. He, yeah, yeah. He's from, is, does, was his shop out there or where was his shop? I think Jack, Jack's always been um, out of Jackson Hole, so oh, a couple right. hours south. Yeah, not, yeah. not far. You know, it's about an hour and a half, two hours south. That's right. But Jack's another another person that uh, I think Jack and in, in La Fontaine and you know Mike Lawson. Yeah. You know, years ago, kind of were, you know, the Fly Fishing Federation, you know, was was going on, and a lot of those names came up, you know, together. So Mike Lawson, La Fontaine, and Jack Dennis spent a lot of time together, and Yep. You know, it's neat. Mike's still around and yeah, you know, you got, you know, Kelly now and, mm-hmm. um, that's right. You know, and then, you, you know, I mean, Jonathan Heems, he's an incredible person to talk to about the Henry sport. I mean, he spent 20 years and you know, one thing about Jonathan that, uh, he's still guiding it, you know, after all these years, he's not only fished it, but he's still on the river daily oh, wow. seeing it. And, and so, is this your co is this your co-owner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's one of my partners. So he's so a little he, older he, than you or is he the same age? No, we're all, we're all the same age, but you know, we, we kind of come up, you know, in our twenties in this area guiding. And so, you know, Jonathan's, you know, still on the river in it. And, and it's, you know, a lot of people don't real, you know, know that, you know, a shop in West Yellowstone has, you know, someone like him to talk to. Huh. And so he's, uh, he's brought a lot of his experience to us. I mean, I've learned a lot through, you know, being around him now as a business partner and, and we all have, and, and it's really fun to get to know the Henry sport. Cause I, you know, for years I was in Argentina, Dave, until probably mid June. Oh, wow. My season in Argentina would end in May. And then I would pack up the family and get to West, you know, in June and then get ready to guide the Madison. So I'm learning these last couple of years of, you know, you know, being more in West Yellowstone, I'm learning a lot about these early season months and they're, they're really a lot of fun. Yeah, that's right. You're, you, and how did that, I can't remember if we talked about that back in, when we did our 2019 episode, but, you know, maybe just quickly, how, how did that, can, how did the, the U3, what is U3 are the co-owners? How, how did that all, you know, did you guys come up with that thing to, to buy? It was a Bud Lilly shop, right? Yeah. Remind me again how you guys are just buddies from college sort of thing and you decided to come together on this? Well, we're actually buddies from West Yellowstone. We all, the three of us had met here in, here in West Yellowstone and we had all, um, kind of you know guided around each other and and uh oh you were all guiding right yeah you guys were all kind of separately guiding yeah joe had started big sky anglers uh, in 2004 he had kind of gone out out on his own and jonathan had you know started at bob jacklin's fly shop bob's another name that i i, I meant to mention yep. is really somebody who's been around and and a wealth of knowledge mm-hmm. in this area and uh he's bob still in town but jonathan had started at uh, bob jacklin's and and then bob had sold his permit his henry's Ford permit to um trout hunter that's how trout hunter was able to open oh, they, they right. bought bob jacklin's permit so jonathan followed that permit and went over to trout hunter and uh, spent a good part of his career over there 
And I had kind of started at Eric's fly shop here in West Yellowstone. So we were all late nineties, yeah. early two thousands working around each other. And we kind of came up through, you know, we all just kind of survived staying in the business. Mm-hmm. And, um, the three of us ended up, you know, in Argentina on a trip together, I was outfitting and John and Joe had brought a group down and, um, we all really connected actually that week in Patagonia and, and we, we had talked about, man, maybe we should do something together. And we started, uh, looking at, you know, what, what we could, what we could pull off and Bud Lilly's, um, Dick and Barb Green, uh, were the previous owners and we knew it was kind of for sale. And, mm. and so we started talking with them and, uh, the three of us, you know, uh, we, we all said, you know, if we, we don't do this now, we're never going to do it. And so we kind of went all in Yeah. and, um, and that's, that's, that's the short story. That's it. That's it. And then, so basically the last five years, like you said, you've been doing that. And then the previous five years, you were pretty much, you were guiding just full on guiding. Yeah. So before that I had a little fly shop. I started a, a small shop. Um, it was the West Yellowstone fly shop and it was about a block from Bud Lilly's and, uh, everybody thought I was kind of crazy starting it in a town like West Yellowstone. And, <laughs> and I said, you know, if I survive, then, <laughs> yeah. then you're, you're the, that's right. And it, yeah. So, uh, you know, Jonathan spent, uh, Jonathan spent his winters in Chile, um, um, Lago Yelcho at Isla Monita. He still spends uh, winters down there. And so he would, he, he lived a similar, you know, kind of, lifestyle that I did. He was just on the Chilean side. I'd migrate to Argentina and then Joe, you know, would move around Montana and then he guided Yellowstone Park. And so now the three of us, you know, under one roof, it's pretty cool because we have all this knowledge to share with people. Um, and, uh, we've built an incredible guide staff that again is, is, you know, gets to tap into all of our, you know, experiences, um, that, that we've had over the last, you know, two decades. Right. You know, again, I think we all were attracted to West Yellowstone because of its location and the diversity, you know, um, that it offers an angler, um, you know, and as we're talking about July, you know, you know, we get back, you get back into fishing in in July, you know, we've gone from, you know, all these Yellowstone park, the Northern part of it's really waking up. So we're no longer touching the Madison or fire hole because those are warm, right? Right. Thermals. But we're looking at the Gallatin in the park, the Gardner, the Lamar Valley. That stuff is is all really cold, and it's just waking up. And so, you know, we're starting to bounce around on some of that stuff, and we're still floating the Madison and Henry's Fork, mm-hmm. and you know, um, um. So July, July, dry flies, long days, um, lots of different water to fish, um, just a beautiful month. And so tourists. Yeah, there's a lot of people around, but you can avoid them, you know, as we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. And in July, what do you, so we talked a little bit about the, the salmon flies. So if those are probably all done, I mean, what's July? Are there any hatches going on then over there? Yeah. So caddis, it's a yeah. great caddis month. I'd say caddis. Fishing that missing link or whatever. Yeah. That missing link's great. You know, there's some other low water caddis patterns. If you're going over the Henry's Fork again, you're probably on some of that flat water. You're going to be, you know, fishing, um, you know, caddis that, you know, might be CDC or a Hemingway caddis or something that sits a little bit lower. Um, you've got, you know, the ranch on the Henry's Fork. You've got, you know, you've got Yellowstone Park. You know, the Galton in the park is a really interesting one, too, that gets overlooked because, you know, it's not as consistent as some of the other waters, but it has cold, cold water. And so as you get into those hotter summer days, um, it can be a great option. And, and it's only wade fishing. You can't fish the Galton out of the, you know, out of a boat. But mm-hmm. um, I love bouncing around the Galton. It's accessible, right? You know, between here and Bozeman, the highway parallels the Galton. You can jump out of your car and just kind of pick off spots. Gotcha. On those drives, are you guys fishing mostly just on the surface? Or are you fishing anything under the surface? Yeah, you know, you can run. You can always run a, a dry dropper. You know, I, I often, you know, will... Uh, We'll start my day, you know, with, especially in the morning, I'll, I'll just kind of run a dry dropper and, and see what's going on. And if fish are really looking up, maybe I'll put two dries on, um, and, and then kind of just fish the surface. But, uh, uh, you know, as you get into the pocket water, it kind of depends on where you're fishing. And this goes back to, you know, how varied the water is. You know, if you're, 
if you're over on the ranch and you're kind of waiting to see a fish and, and you're playing that game, you might be watching the water more than casting mm-hmm. or fishing. If you're on the Gallatin or the Madison and some of the riffles or pocket water, you might be, you know, making two or three casts and then walking yeah. and uh, to the next spot. That's right. And so it, it really changes depending on the type of water. Do you guys typically, when you get going out there, are you, do you folk, uh, like say, Hey, we're going to do dry flies today. We're just going to stick with that for the whole day. Or are you guys mixing it up throughout the day? That, that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. You know, it kind of depends on, you know, how you want to fish or how people want to fish. Well, I guess if you want to fit, like say, I want to get some dry fly action, I guess that, that answers your yeah. question. Then you just fish dries all day. And it, can you, and in July, you, you can do that pretty, I mean, pretty effectively if you're, let's say the Gallatin, you're on the Gallatin. For, yeah. Yeah. Water temps are good and a lot of bugs are out. So even if the bugs aren't hatching, the fish have seen, seen plenty of bugs and they're looking up. And we always say that the fish are looking up. So you can, you can make a fish come up and eat with a good presentation. Nice. Um, so you don't have to have, you don't have to have a hatch, um, to, to make the fish want to come up. It will in July because they've been yeah. seeing lots of bugs around. Gotcha. So probably the good tip, uh, for anybody, and this is, comes up a lot is maybe go down there and, and stop by and get a guide for a day or half a day or something to learn the water. And then, you know, if you had a week over there, then you got another six days or whatever, to just fish on your own. Is that a cool way to do it? You know, there's plenty of guides. It's a great way to do it is, is get out with a guide or come into the shop and, you know, ask, ask what's fishing. I think a lot of people I've seen over the years, they read about, um, one of these famous rivers that we've been talking about and they get so keyed in on it and they show up and they say, how's it fishing? And they say, how's the, you know, how's the Madison? They say, well, it's, it's, it's good, but there's these other two rivers that are really good right now. And they say, well, I've done all my research on the Madison. That's where I want to go. All right. But these other two rivers are prime and they're just a different direction. You know, maybe you should check them out. And so I've always seen the people who are flexible and come here kind of with an open mind, um, yeah. uh, and are willing to explore a little bit. They have a great week and, um, that's it. you know, yeah. So, so I, I, I've always encouraged people to, again, we're going back to like, what's the, what's the strength of this area is that, you know, any direction, if you're willing to drive a little bit, you can be on some, some wonderful water. And we haven't really talked about all the tributaries, no. you know, and that's something I'll, I'll just, I, I won't mention names, but I'll just say if you, if you are, you know, if you look at maps and you look at tributaries that dump into all these rivers, mm-hmm. um, there's some great fishing to be had that a lot of people overlook. So we're kind of through July. Let's take us into the second half. Yeah. So, so as you get into August, say you're planning a trip in August or September, how is, does that look a lot different? You know, August is August is kind of warm, right? You can get warm days. It's one of our warmer months. Um, so we start we start the the hatches um, aren't as prolific as they are in June and July, mm. but we still have we still have a number of bugs around. They're just they're just not as thick. We start really looking at terrestrials. And so hopper fishing, and we've had some, some incredible hopper fishing the last couple of years, um, on the Madison in Yellowstone park. Um, so, so we're looking at hoppers and ants and beetles. So for those people who enjoy tying flies or are trying to plan trips, you know, or, or, you know, plan water to fish, you know, there's, there's a lot of good stuff. Look for colder water and, and have plenty of terrestrials along. Okay. Um, and, and you still, depending on, Again, where you're fishing, you still are going to have some caddis and mayflies, but really terrestrials, I'd say, be a, a focus okay. in, in, in August. Um, in August, as you know, we talked a little bit, Dave, earlier about, you know, May, like today, if I were taking someone fishing and it had just snowed yep. three inches, I'm probably not going to be on the water early. Well, in August, you are going to be in the water early. Yeah. And, and you want to be out early and, and, and fish sometimes till noon and you know, the famous siesta that we, we yeah. take in Patagonia, it's not a bad idea to, to take a siesta here in, in Montana. <laughs> a siesta is always good. I think a siesta, no matter where you are. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I might take a siesta today, in fact. But yeah. uh, so that, I mean, that's a good tip. So what is early? I mean, you talking to get out there before it's light and getting ready to go? Yeah, get yeah. out. You know, I wouldn't say before it's light, but, you know, early, early morning. You know, one thing, you'll get into August and fish have seen a little pressure. In some of the rivers 
you know, and if you want to fish dries, you can fish that those fish when the light's low, some of those big fish will sit right up in the shallows. And so, you know, I, I love just blind fishing, you know, dries up in those shallows. And as the sun gets up, those, those bigger fish will slide, you know, back into the, the oxygen and pocket water. Mm-hmm. And, um, you can still get them out there, but they're, they're tricky at times. Um, so those early mornings can provide some great, you know, dry fly fishing, um, or dry dropper, you know, and, and then, you know, as it gets, as it gets warmer, you start covering water more, you're having to fish heavy water. If you're nymphing, you know, um, which, uh, it can be very effective too. If fish aren't looking up, yeah. they'll sit in that oxygen in August, they'll start taking, you know, they'll concentrate in that, that, uh, faster moving water. A lot of people, that's another thing I see a lot of people overlook is, is fishing the heavy water. Um, cause they just don't know how. So the two tips I would give people is if you're going to fish that heavy water, make sure you have a fly that can float. So we start chubby Chernobyl's right. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm sure you, oh, yeah. um, we've got them down. I think, you know, now we've got them in the shop down to like 16. Oh, wow. We've got them in about every color you can imagine. And, um, they're, they're a great, you know, mid July through August pattern. And, um, they can, you know, imitate little stones, various terrestrials, um, they float well, they're great mm-hmm. to run a little dropper off of. So, you know, we always carry a, a, a mix of those in, in various colors and sizes. And, um, yeah. And then midday, you know, sometimes you can just feel it's hot and it's a bright day and nothing's happening. Take a break, you know, take a siesta and then, mm-hmm. you know, wait for the, the sun to kind of drop off the water and the water temps to drop and, um, you know, then go back to, you know, fish in the last couple hours. Let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. OPST's micro series has been designed to pleasantly accommodate both single hand and two handed waterborne casts. Sporting single weld upper grips, switch style lower handles, a medium fast action, and a short length that makes almost anything possible. Uh, I've been swinging flies for trout with this uh, this lovely rod uh, with the micro series lately, and it's been really amazing. In fact, um, on my last dry fly trip, I actually put the uh, Skagit line away, grabbed an old reel with a five weight line. Uh, I think it was a weight forward line. Tossed that on this rod and it casted. Uh, how did it cast? It was like a dream. Um, lots of power and a super delicate touch. It kind of feels like this rod pretty much does it all. So, um, so this is pretty amazing stuff. Whether you are swinging soft tackles, throwing heavy articulated streamers, or busting bushy salmon flies into the teeth of an afternoon breeze, these nifty little hybrid rods should have a permanent place in your quiver. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash OPST to get it started right now. That's wetflyswing.com slash OPST. Okay, let's get back to the show. Probably in August you're going to get a lot of caddis action. Uh, you'll see some caddis, but again, you're doing a lot of blind fishing with dries. That's a month where you're not seeing as many bugs around and, and you're just, you, you know, you're putting your dry in a fishy spot yeah. and, and asking a fish to come find it. Yep. So um, you're looking for under or whatever, just cover and food, food lanes and things like that. Typical places. Yeah. And you're, you'll see, you know, there will be some, there will be some hatches on certain rivers. Those who are really into hatches, you can always find, you know, you can always find bugs coming off, but, um, it's, it's, a uh, it's a time where, you know, I, I really enjoy August is, is a month that I like to get up into Yellowstone and hike. Mm. That's, that's my favorite. That, that was always, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, there's a lot of get off the beaten path water in Yellowstone park in, in August is, is probably the month where the conditions are most stable. Mm. And so we are talking about everything kind of near West Yellowstone outside of the park is maybe a little warm at times up, up in Yellowstone at 8,000 feet, the water's cold Gotcha. and those fish are active. And so again, you know, um, just driving a little bit and willing to, you know, get into a, a different watershed with, you know, colder water temps. Um, you've got fish that are, you know, fresh and active and, and looking up. 
That's awesome. It seems like you're almost like, it's almost like the stonefly life history where you, as your fishing starts, you start lowering the rivers and you work your way, right? You work your <laughs> way up river. That's a good river. comparison. I never thought of it like that, but I like it. <laughs> I man. mean, it's changed its fight yeah. over here because we were talking about that with um, changes in climate. Well, not even climate, just changes in the tailwater temperatures and things. The, okay. You know, we've seen changes in the stoneflies. So, so that's, you know, they're not um, necessarily moving up the river as much as they used to. But typically okay. they do in your area, right? They still do that. They work their way up. Yeah, they do. They do work their way up. But, uh, you know, I've never really, uh, I'd, I'd like to learn more about some of the things, you know, that, that you've talked to people about. Yeah. Um, they, they do. Yeah, they, they work their way up the river. But I, 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 um, I haven't really thought about if, you know, 10 years ago, were they more consistent on how they work their way up the river? Um, we're still seeing them, you know, they start in Ennis and work their way up to Hebgen and you know, move through the river, come up, you know, the Galton and, you know, um, but I don't, I, I haven't really thought about the, you know, you know, comparing it to a decade ago and you yeah, know, we're seeing inconsistent patterns. Yeah. So it's interesting. So August, I mean, that's cool. So you're in the park and then as you get into September, talk about that September, October, what is, um, things start eventually cooling down? What does that change quite a bit? Yeah, it does. So our September is a month that's, it's really a transition month. And we get asked, you know, people again, are always calling trying to plan trips. And September is a month that I kind of have to paint both pictures. It could be cold. I mm-hmm. mean, we could get a snow as early as Labor Day. If we get freezes and snow and rain, then we're going to see, you know, migratory fish. So brown trout are going to start moving into the system. We're going to start seeing mayfly hatches, um, kind of, become consistent. We're going to see, we're going to go back to those shorter days where we start fishing, you know, the middle of the day and not as early in the morning Mm -hmm. or, or at night, we start returning to the, the, the fisheries right at the West entrance here, the fire hole, the Madison, they again have those thermal influences. So they're, they're uh, starting to, you know, cool off and really fish again. Um, so that's one scenario or it stays warm. And so, you know, if it stays warm through the third week of September or even into late September, we don't get those mayfly hatches. We don't get those migratory fish and we're still fishing terrestrial patterns and we have longer days. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it can be either, either of those two. Yeah. Um, and, and so usually by the third week of September, it's cooling off here. And, uh, we start seeing, you know, fish moving around, migratory fish moving around. We start getting some mayfly hatches returning to the systems. Um, you know, the hopper fishing is kind of dropping off and, uh, you know, we're, we're, um, you know, we're, it's, it's really cooling off. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anybody coming in September, you know, come, come prepared for weather because it's, it, it can really be all over the place. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And, and people, I mean, again, the park, so the park stays open. How, how long does that stay open? So Yellowstone fishes Memorial day till the first Sunday in November Oh, November. is the fishing in the fishing season. Yep. And again, I I've watched over the 20 years I've been in West Yellowstone. I've watched the month of May and October. I, I feel like be warmer than, than, you know, 20 years ago. And so we're getting an extended season here. And, uh, you know, the people who always came to fish the fall browns in October, you know, sometimes, you know, need to think about doing other things because there's great fishing, but they've always come to fish. Uh, for example, you know, there's a migratory brown that comes out of Hebgen Lake up mm. into Yellowstone in the park. Oh, cool. Well, if we haven't had, yeah, if we haven't had cold weather and rain and things that drive that migration, well, those fish are going to be sitting in the lake. <laughs> But there's great fishing down in the valley. If you drive 30 minutes and you go fish the Madison where you're not fishing migratory fish and you're fishing, you know, to resident fish, you can have some wonderful fishing or you get over the Henry's Fork or go up to the Galton. So, again, it's, Hmm. you know, I can't I can't stress uh, to people, to anglers, come here with an open mind, you know, stop in the fly shop and, and you know, what's what's going on? Where should I be? And um that's that's really the beauty of this area is that you you can you can find great fishing almost you know that those in that whole six months if you if you stay flexible right just be open so that that makes sense and 
Yeah, I guess that you just figure out when you want to go and whether it's May or between May and October, there's going to be some, probably some decent fishing to find there. Um, well, anything, I mean, I guess we talked about kind of a, a year or a season. Um, if somebody was going up, you know, I'm sure we didn't answer all the questions here. What would you recommend? Are there any other resources that people could dig into? I mean, there's the, lo- the local fly shops, but I know um, like Mike Lawson, I think, has a book on um, on uh, the Henry's Fork, right? Are there other resources out there? I guess um, Kelly's got some streamer stuff, right? The books. What would you recommend? Kelly's got some streamer stuff. I think there's a book that Craig, Craig Matthews did. You know, there's a video. Um, I think it's fishing Yellowstone hatches. Oh, cool! And it, it's it's maybe it was done 10, 10, 10 or fifteen years ago, but it's it's really one of my favorites. And it goes through, um, you know, really all the months and all the different. You know, it's very hatch centric. Perfect. Perfect. Um, but it's a uh, it's a great video if someone wants to watch um, or see you know, how diverse this area is and all the different bugs. And it really goes into a lot of detail. It's great footage. And I, I think you can still find it. Um, it's one of my favorites uh, when it comes to just kind of, kind of, you know, seeing how diverse this area really is. Yeah. Um, you That's know, perfect. so that would be a good one. And there are a couple of books out, you know, fishing Yellowstone and, yeah. um, you know, but that, that, that one, that video comes to mind. Um, a okay. local guy, Phil, had worked with uh, some of the guys, I think, over at Blue Ribbon, um, you know, put that together years ago. And I, I still think it's one of the best. Um, you know, and, you know, another thing we didn't mention, Dave, that's really fun in the fall is uh, swing fishing. So we have, mm-hmm. um, we, we've kind of done this trout spay event. That's right. With Matt. Matt's the one that's kind of still part of that. Yeah, Matt, Matt's part of it. Actually, the first one, Simon, Simon Gosworth's a good buddy, and he was over and helped us get it, get it started with, with uh, Sage and Kurt Kruger, um, our Sage rep here, you know, brought in a crew the, the year one. And every year it's grown. Last year we took a break with kind of what's going on in the world with mm-hmm. COVID. We didn't, we didn't want to have big group gatherings, but it's back on. And um, we do it in September. Um, and this year we actually are really excited to have, you know, um, Simon is going to do a two day space school following the event. So we have a Saturday event where a bunch of rod companies show up real rod companies mm-hmm. and it's, it's, uh, just out of town and we do free clinics and it's just a lot of fun. It's just, you know, people who love, you know, trout spay and swing fishing nice. and, um, September and October is a great time to do it. Although you can do it throughout the year, but Simon's going to, we're going to be doing a space school here. Um, I think we might still have a few slots oh, actually, perfect. but he's going to be, yeah, he's going to be hanging out and, and doing a two day school, um, following the spay event. So we're really excited to, to do that. And trout spay is really growing, um, in this area, um, on, on, you that's know, right. all the different rivers. And, uh, so that's something fun. I was doing, I've been doing a little bit of trout spay as well. And, uh, the cool thing is there's some rods out there that you can, uh, I mean, uh, you can switch it up pretty easy. I've been using an OPST rod that I, I used for trout spay, and then I switched off, put a dry line on, and fish dries on the same rod. So it's How the, was that? It was you great. Know, I've been looking. It was was ama- it? Was yeah, it? it was amazing. It was super amazing. I mean, I, I didn't think it was going to be possible, and then I just grabbed like a five-weight line. It was just my basic nine-foot, you know, what I use typically, and it cast like a dream. Neat. Was, yeah, it was really sweet. We, uh, I, you know, I'd, I'd heard that um, they kind of designed the OPST rods to, to be a little bit more user friendly for single hand. Mm-hmm. And um, we, yeah. we had the, the rep, the OPST rep in um, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he was kind of, he put, we didn't get out on the water um, to, to try them as, as kind of spay rods, but we did cast um, single hand lines on them. And they, they did, they did have that feel. So that's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, I, you you enjoyed that totally, and I'm 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 a little a little biased. I'll be to be honest. The OPSD is a sponsor of the podcast right now, so there we're actually yeah. So you know, obviously, but they have great stuff. I mean, I think anybody that knows they use OPSD and you know what they have going. Obviously, Ed, you know, they they got the mastermind over there. But you know, but the I always think yeah. of him as like the mad scientist back there. Nobody sees him, but he's built these amazing uh, this, all this gear. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's, that's way, that's way cool. Um, yeah, the, the trial space stuff is really a lot of fun. We, uh, you know, we've always kind of embraced all of it, right. Cause everybody has different tastes and, and rods and fly lines. And, and so we, um, we've always tried to bring everybody together and, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
you know, and then Matt, Matt's, yeah, definitely driving, yeah. driving a lot of that. He's, he's still in Helena and on the Missouri, but he, he spends time in West Yellowstone. And so he and I have, uh, put, um, a lot of time into kind of growing that and we mm-hmm. have a lot of fun with it. And it's, um, Matt's, Matt's actually worked with Kerry Burkheimer on a rod, um, a 12 oh, cool. foot five inch five weight. Oh, so what, a big, how, how big or how long? So it's a 12, I think it's 12 foot five inch five weight. And so oh, wow. Matt, yeah. Matt wanted a, a true trout spay rod that wasn't, it, it's really not built around steelhead that then gets used for trout. He wanted a big stick for trout spay. I was going to say big, yeah, was, big trout. You know, I use, you know, we, we here in Yellowstone in this, or West Yellowstone, I use 11, 11 to 11, six, four weights, kind of my go-to because yeah. I can, I can get out and fish you know, fairly, you know, a big river, I can make it work. And then, and then it's still fun on the smaller stuff, but Matt living on the Missouri wanted something that he could reach out a little further with and, and throw a little bigger fly. And so mm-hmm. he, um, he and Kerry kind of came up with this 12, five, five weight. That's it. It's a beautiful fly rod and it really is, um, you know, just kind of a big river trout rod. That's, uh, and that's kind of been fun that's awesome. to play with. Yeah. yeah um, Bert, Bert got some good stuff. Yeah. And so we've, you know, there's a number, but again, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of that going on in the fall. So is so it just, you know, mm-hmm. swing fishing, swing fishing, um, on the Madison, the Henry's fork, you know, the Galton's a little bit tight. Um, but, uh, you know, Yellowstone park waters on some of the bigger rivers. Um, um, it's something that more and more people are getting into and, you know, we're starting to fish it throughout the summer. We didn't even really talk about that, but yeah. you know, uh, um, you know, you can swing a big salmon fly, skate it across the surface, and get some just violent takes. It's oh wow! Fun. No kidding. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, you cool. Try that. So, so you're talking, you're talking. So basically, just trout spay with the salmon fly, sort of thing. So Absolutely. Swinging. How yeah. does that? So you put on. So you're talking. So in June or whatever, early June, you you can swing uh, salmon. I flies. would say more like July. Yeah. yeah. Get get somewhere like like on the Madison. So we kind of learned this. I, you know, I'd always wanted to do this. And last year, John Hazlett had come out with some guys from the Ashland fly shop and, 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 uh, Kurt Kruger. And we did a little, we, we did a little, you know, kind of filming and, and, um, we were going to do some stuff earlier in the season, but schedules didn't align with everything going on last spring. And they said, Hey, we're just going to come out. And so it happened to be the first week of July. And, and, uh, we had all these guys with, you know, trout spay rods and so we we had uh, salmon flies on the madison and we um we were skating them and uh um hmm. and swinging and swinging subsurface stuff yeah. too but we had some really fun takes um, you did yeah and, and i'm 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 gonna huh. do it again this year that's, I, I uh that's awesome you know you know we've all kind of taken october caddis in the fall but we you know i i've i've overlooked the summer months when those big bugs are out, I want to skate hoppers too. I'm glad you mentioned this, Justin. This is, I've, I've, I got the salmon fly. Our, our things are going to be hitting here in the next week or two. And I'm, I've got a big trip coming up. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit you up on that. I'm going to do that for sure. I'll let you know how it goes. Dude, you have to do it, man. I oh, want to hear, yeah, I want to hear all about it. Sounds, and in fact, I have a buddy, I have a buddy who's on the trip who's a tying, you know, he's like my, you know, he's producing all the flies. So I'm going to give him a heads up this morning. I'll be like, hey, Greg, hook me up yeah. some uh, skaters. Or, well, and I guess it doesn't have to be a skater. It could just be a normal salmon fly pattern. You could just, just, yeah. I mean, I, I was just taking normal salmon fly patterns and, and, you know, flatten them out. You know, when they hit the water, you, you I'm sure you've seen them kind of crash into the water yeah. and flutter their wings. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I was kind of doing, I, I was actually running a, um, I was running a long leader, um, you know, about a 15 foot leader, which was also really cool. And then I was kind of not a real aggressive kind of swing. I would, I would kind of dead drift it and then mend down and engage the swing and then mm-hmm. kind of let it dead drift. So, you know, I was, I was trying to think of what a, you know, fish would see when a, when a big adult came down and crashed into the water mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, so I wasn't just throwing and across and then engaging it and letting it really kind of swing. Like we do a steelhead. Um, I was, I was going between a swing and a little bit of a dead drift. A dead drift. And, That's um, awesome. You know, it was, it was a, a little kind of a, a mix and, yeah. uh, I got some great takes and, and, and with that longer rod, I was fishing spots that I could never fish with my single hand rod. Right. Like I, yep. I just, you know, I couldn't get to them. And so it, I had a blast with that. I'm going to do more of that trout spay throughout the summer months here. 
that's cool. Well, here's here's a couple of Trout Space. I was just I was just editing, or not editing, but a past episode. John McCloskey was on in '89. He's out in Georgia, but he does Trout Space out there in Alaska. He a couple of his tips were um, he was talking about slowing the fly down, you know, with constant mends to really drop it down. Then he also said the jigging. He says sometimes if it's not happening, yeah, he he jigs yeah. it, and he was saying like that can be super effective. Yeah, just pop that fly and give yep. it some give it some action, wake those fish up. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah, it. no, those are those are great tips. Nice. Well, you know, as always, we we can't cover it all, right? But uh, we we dug into <laughs> a little bit. How, how do you feel? Do you feel like if somebody's listening to this, they kind of get a, at least a feel for what they could expect if they're heading out there? Yeah, I I, I hope so. You know, I, again, there's there are a lot of different waters that come into play during the months of May and May through October, and uh, I would just you know encourage people to uh, stay flexible and. And, um, you know, look at, look at water temps and, and, uh, you know, elevation and, and really pay attention to that and, and don't get so focused on one, one river, um, be willing to move around. I think that's the beauty of our area is, is, um, A lot of you know, everything we have around us. Yeah. And so yeah. that's the, you know, and, and again, you know, you need lifetimes to fish all this water. We've all, all of us say in the shop all the time, we have our, our, our list of places we want to fish and. We try to knock a few off every year, but we'll never get to them all. And um, it's it's neat to have that much water to explore. There's a lot to be done, even with all the people that, you know, come to this area. Um, there's there is a lot of stuff out there that is unexplored. It just takes you know, um, kind of thinking outside the box and a little bit of work. And yeah. um, nice. you know, yeah. That's yeah, great. So. That's great. What's your, if you had to, you know, you talk about the, again, through May through October, you can only pick one month and one uh, place to fish. What, what do you, what do you, would you be going for? Boy, the month of July, um, mid June through mid July, if you want hatches and, yeah. and, and dry flies, I'm, I, I think that that's, so you still love you know, the dry fly action. Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, I, I love, I love, I love it all. I love dry flies. I love streamers. I love nymphs. I love swing fishing. I, I really do. I've always loved all the different things, but for, for the dry fly, that's a month, um, for, for fall fishing and, and swing fishing and looking for those big browns, um, that kind of move around that mid September to mid October, um, late September to late October kind of window. Those are my two favorite times. I, I like, I love dry flies. I love seeing fish come up. I love the hatches. Um, yeah, so, so I would say, you know, mid June to mid July. And then again in the fall and those big fish are moving around and either throwing streamers or, or swinging flies for them. Yep. Those are my two favorite times, you know, Perfect. All right, Justin. Well, uh, I guess I'll let you get out of here. I uh, just want to give a heads up. Anything else coming up for you guys? Uh, I, well, you, I guess you got a big one, Simon, in that that class coming up this fall. Anything else you want to give a heads up on? You know, I think we might have a, a class with George Daniel. Oh, cool. In, uh, late July. I, I um, Yeah, Chris Daniels, uh, you know, um, you know, is George is his older brother oh, yeah. and, and Chris is uh, one of the guides on our staff. And so we're we're excited about that. I think that's going to happen. And then, uh, you know, we just have, um, yeah, it looks like we have a really busy guide season ahead and, and, uh, yep. great staff at the shop. So, if, you know, people are in West Yellowstone or just want information, you know, feel free to call the shop. And I think we're going to have a great summer, um, mm-hmm. good snowpack and perfect. Um, yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, getting out on the water more and more throughout the summer. Sounds good. Well, hopefully maybe this will be the year I can hook up with you guys and, uh, you know, maybe one of those classes or something I could, uh, you know, we'll get the word out for sure. Uh, you know, with what you have going, I guess it's just, uh, um, where would be the best place? Just big anglers.com. If people want to connect with you. Yeah. Yeah. Info at big anglers.com would be a great place, um, to connect with us. And, you know, on Instagram, Matt, Matt Clara manages our Instagram account. And, you know, people communicate on that too. Matt's, Matt's on there all the time. And yeah. he's a, he's a great resource when it comes to fishing questions yeah, and he uh, he's, he's checking in there. So, Perfect. you know, if people want to message, um, our Instagram account, he's, he's always on that. Perfect. I'll send him a DM and give him a, give him a wave, say, Hey, I haven't talked to him yeah. in a while. So <laughs> yeah, he'd love to hear from you. Cool. All right, Justin. Hey, thanks. Thanks again for another, you know, this is, you know, actually to be honest with you, this is officially the third episode with, since I'm, I'm including the Matt one we did, which was way at the beginning. So 
now Big Sky Anglers has more episodes on the Wet Fly Swing podcast than any other uh, any anybody else out there. So you guys are leading. Come on, wow, man! Well, that's that's an honor. Yeah, yeah, you, you got it. We've had a couple of we've had a couple of double. You know, I think uh, George. Uh, George Cook, uh, Davey Watton have been on a couple times, but uh, nobody's been on three. So, uh, so this is good, man. I appreciate your time That's today. Cool. And hey, thanks for doing this with the clubhouse. I know this is, um, you know, it's a little bit different, but I, I think it's uh, it's pretty fun. You know, and obviously, like we have somebody uh, now out in the, you know, on the audience, and I think the longer term, this live stuff is actually probably where I'm going to try to do more of it because I think it's just more of the interaction. So, yeah, I appreciate you, you yeah. letting me do yeah. this today. For sure. Yeah, Dave, thanks for your time, man. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was great catching up. So there you go. If you want to find all of the show notes and all of the links, please head over to wetflyswing.com slash 227. That's 227. Please uh, support uh, our local fly shop by heading over to wetflyswing.com slash fly shop. Uh, tell them you came from the Wet Fly Swing podcast, and uh, and you can get a nice discount there, and that'll help them know uh, where you came from, and that'll also help us get the word out to a few more people out there. I wanted to let you know you can tune in uh, next Tuesday, Tuesday morning, bright and early. As soon as you get up, there'll be a brand new, clean, shiny episode for you, and this one is going to be Mike Schultz the master of smallmouth bass fishing, among other things, out in the Midwest. He breaks down his good stuff uh, on Tuesday. So I've been waiting for this one quite a while, been planning for this one, been trying to get a hold of Mike and finally putting this together. So if you want, uh, just go to uh, wetflyswing.com slash subscribe, and you can uh, click on whatever app you're on and quickly subscribe so you get updated when that big episode goes live. Smallmouth bass, many many think this one is the... uh, the most powerful freshwater fish. So that's a wrap. Uh, That's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, If you could tell, we had a couple little snippets there where you could hear the clubhouse uh, ding. And uh, so we were on clubhouse uh, scheduling this one. And I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. But uh, if you're interested in checking out our live episodes, head over to wetflyswing.com slash live. And you can sign up and find out what next episode is uh, is coming up. Should be a fun one. I'm not sure what we got on tap right now, but I'm going to go check right now and update that link for you. So I um, want to thank you for stopping by today. I hope to maybe uh, see you sometime, maybe soon online or maybe soon on the water. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.